It perhaps goes without saying that we're living in very challenging times, a worsening climate crisis, an unrelenting pandemic, staggering biodiversity loss, and a soaring poverty levels that are really, really uh, worrisome. And it's painfully obvious that these multiple crises and their combined toll disproportionately affect certain populations more than others, exposing the social and racial inequalities that pervade our society. And we know that forest loss and degradation have contributed to climate change and to the emergence of new infectious diseases like the coronavirus. We also know that markets, particularly foods and agriculture production, are the main culprit of biodiversity loss and degradation of tropical forests. There is no doubt about it. And if we are to meet the Climate Biodiversity SDG international commitments, we need an urgent transformation of the agriculture and food sectors. The good news is that some leading companies are starting to ask the question about how to shift from being key drivers of habitat loss with their value chains to restoring, repairing, reforesting or regenerating those key forests and key landscapes on which actually their businesses also depend. We need these sectors to accelerate such transformation to protect these ecosystems on which our lives depend at the speed and scale required. So the question we ask is how do we go about driving this system change? What is it that we need to do differently? Now, to transform any market, we need to change three things, the supply and the demand and the market rules. We need to shift from the creation of unsustainable ingredients and products to more sustainable ones, ones that repair, restore, regenerate the landscapes. And consumers are key in demanding that change. And by changing the market rules, I mean introducing the laws and voluntary standards like the Rainforest Alliance Certification Program that can incentivize companies to change the way they work for the better. We have to move from a harm reduction approach to a net positive regenerative approach to find better ways to enrich biodiversity, increase carbon sequestration, restore and regenerate soils in farming, etc. Simply not doing harm is not enough anymore. We are beyond that tipping point. Now we need to restore and only by empowering producer communities and scaling up market linkages can we drive any meaningful change. The Rainforest Alliance brings that people-centric vision to the creation of sustainable markets. The needs and opportunities for farmers and forest communities are our mandate and our compass. Perhaps most emblematic of this holistic integrated approach is our work in community forestry, which is founded on the idea that when communities make their living, from the forests and thrive economically and thrive as community socially, they have every incentive to protect the source of income and their culture and their families. Take for example the concessions of Guatemala's Maya Biosphere Reserve, who have built boosting forest enterprises with sustainable harvested timber and non-timber products. These community-run concessions have successfully safeguarded 500,000 hectares of the largest and most important tropical forest north of the Amazon. Plus, they've been able to create near zero deforestation rates since 2004, which is totally unprecedented in Guatemala. And what was truly visionary when the Rainforest Alliance started more than 30 years ago was the fact of the Alliance itself. Only by working with all sectors and building strong partnerships like the concessions in Guatemala can anyone tackle such daunting challenges? Now is the time for us to redouble our efforts and regenerate the landscapes that matter through the sectors that matter at a speed and scale that really matters. There's no time for delaying action. We are in a pivotal moment and I'm optimistic and energized to drive the shift that needs to happen for the better and brighter future, one in which people and nature can thrive in harmony together. Thank you.